Hello, my name is Laura. Welcome to the Arc Online this week. I hope you've had a good week. At the end of the story last week, the ship that Paul was on had run into a bit of trouble. They'd gone too close to the beach off the coast of Malta. But a centurion spared Paul's life and stopped the soldiers from killing the prisoners and everyone got to land safely, which is amazing. This week, Paul journeys to Rome. I thought it would be really helpful to show you a map of the Mediterranean Sea so that you can see Paul's journey so far. So he started all the way over here and at the moment he's here and today he's going to go from there to there which doesn't look like very far but in reality it is quite far. So now he's in Rome, a vast city with a lot of people, probably the biggest he's ever seen. I'm going to show you some pictures of Rome now and I'd like you to see if you can tell me what they are. Picture number one, have a guess. That is St Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. Picture number two. That one is the Pantheon. Number three. This one's a bit more famous. That's the Colosseum. And number four. Who are these people? Or can you guess what they do? They're gladiators. They were famous for fighting in the Colosseum and places like that. Over to Anne. Thanks, Laura. In our quiz today, I'm going to ask you, who said this? Was it God or was it Paul? If you think it was God, do this. And if you think it was Paul, do this. We do this for Paul because he saw a blinding light on the road to Damascus when he met the risen Lord Jesus. If you don't know, have a guess and see if you're right. Here's number one. Who said this? Go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Was that God or Paul? Well, that was God. Paul arrived in Jerusalem and he was warmly welcomed by the Christians there. But some Jews caused trouble for Paul. They caused the crowd to riot, to seize Paul and to beat him. And the Roman commander had to arrest Paul just to rescue him from the angry crowd. Paul spoke to the crowd and told them how he had met the risen Lord Jesus. He told them how the Lord had spoken to him and said, Go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Number two, who said this? Is it legal for you to beat a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found guilty? Was that God or Paul? That was Paul. He said it to the Roman commander when the Roman commander was about to have him beaten. Paul hadn't done anything wrong and he was a Roman citizen, so they weren't allowed to beat him and thankfully they stopped. Number three, who said this? Take courage, as you have been a witness for me in Jerusalem, so you must also be a witness for me in Rome. Was that God or Paul? That was God. It would have given great comfort to Paul to know that whatever difficulties he faced in Jerusalem, God would get him through them and take him to Rome. Here's number four. I appeal to Caesar. Was that God or Paul?
That was Paul. Paul had four different trials before different people, even though he was innocent. In Paul's trial in Caesarea before the Roman governor Festus, Festus asked Paul if he would go back to Jerusalem to stand trial there. But Paul appealed to Caesar, the Roman emperor, so that he would be taken to Rome instead. As we said, Paul knew that God's plan was that he should tell people in Rome about Jesus. Here's number, number five. Who said this? Do not be afraid. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. Was that God or Paul? That was God. Paul was on a ship heading for Rome when there was a terrible storm and many of the people gave up hope of being saved. But an angel of God kindly spoke to Paul and told him that everyone would be saved. And they were saved. The ship finally came near land and all 276 people on board were able to either swim to shore or float there on planks. God was faithful and nothing could stop the spread of the good news about Jesus. Today I'm going to tell you what happened next and how Paul finally reached Rome. But first, Laura is going to pray. We're now going to say a prayer before Anne tells us the story from the Bible today. So, hands together, eyes closed. You say, Father God, thank you that we can hear from the Bible. Thank you. Uh, that Paul had so much perseverance despite all the things that happened to him and such boldness to keep spreading your word. Amen. Amen. And over to you. When all 276 people who had been shipwrecked were safely on the shore, they found out that the island was called Malta. The people of the island were very kind. They built a fire and welcomed them all because it was rainy and cold. Paul gathered wood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper bit him on the hand. When the people of the island saw the snake hanging from Paul's hand, they said to each other, This man must be a murderer. Though he escaped from the sea, the goddess, Justice, has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire, and he was fine. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. Of course, we know the people were wrong. Paul wasn't a murderer or a god, but he had been given an important job by the one true God. God had sent terrible difficulties, a storm and a shipwreck and now a snake bite. But God had also kindly looked after Paul through these difficulties. God got Paul through them so that he could do his job. Even a deadly snake bite couldn't stop the spread of the good news about Jesus. Publius, the chief official of the island, lived nearby. He welcomed them into his home for three days and was very good to them. Publius's father was ill in bed. Paul went in to see him. He prayed for him, placed his hands on him and healed him. After this, the rest of the people on the island who were ill came and were healed. The islanders honoured them in many ways, and when they were ready to sail, the islanders gave them the supplies they needed. We've seen earlier in the book of Acts that Jesus worked through Paul to heal people, showing that Paul had a special job from God. And that didn't change just because he was a prisoner heading for Rome, even here on Malta. Paul healed many people with the power of Jesus. After three months, they set sail on another ship that had been in Malta for the winter. They stopped at several places along the way, including Puteoli, where they found some Christians who invited them to spend the week with them. From there, they went on to Rome. The Christians there had heard that they were coming and they came out of the city to meet Paul. When Paul saw them, he thanked God and was encouraged. When they got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live in his own house with a soldier to guard him. 
Again, God was kind to Paul. Some of the Christians walked about 50 miles out of Rome so that they could encourage Paul on the last part of his journey. And even though Paul was a prisoner, he got to live in his own house with a guard instead of being in prison. Three days later, Paul called together the local Jewish leaders and said to them, Brothers, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans, although I had done nothing against our people or against the customs of our fathers. The Romans asked me many questions and wanted to let me go free, because I was not guilty of any crime deserving death. The Jews objected, so I had to make an appeal to Caesar. I didn't mean to bring any charge against my own people. That's why I've asked to see you and talk with you. It's because of the hope of Israel that I'm in chains. Even though Paul was a prisoner, he could still tell people the good news about Jesus. And as he'd done everywhere else, Paul talked about Jesus to the Jews first. As before, he talked about the Old Testament and how it points forward to Jesus. How Jesus is God's promised forever King, the hope of Israel, the Messiah. The Jewish leaders replied, We haven't received any letters from Judea about you, and none of our people who have come here from there has reported or said anything bad about you. But we want to hear your ideas, for we know that people everywhere are talking about this religious group. They arranged a day to meet, and large numbers of people came to the place where Paul was staying. Paul witnessed to them from morning till evening, explaining about the kingdom of God. And he tried to persuade them about Jesus from the scriptures. Some of the Jews believed what Paul said, but others didn't. Paul reminded them that the prophet Isaiah had said that many Jews would not understand the message. He told them that God's salvation had therefore been offered to the Gentiles and that the Gentiles would listen. Paul continued to witness, to talk about what he had seen. As before, some Jews believed Paul's message, but many others didn't. Paul told them that the prophet Isaiah, hundreds of years before, had predicted that many Jews wouldn't understand about Jesus, and he said that many Gentiles would listen. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. He talked about the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. He was very bold and no one tried to stop him from speaking. Paul was under house arrest and yet now he could talk boldly about the kingdom of God and about Jesus to lots of people in Rome, the capital city of the Roman Empire, the known world. Jesus' mission was unstoppable. Let's remind ourselves of our memory verse. Say it with me with the actions. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Let's do that again. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. That's what Jesus said to his disciples before he went up to heaven, right at the start of the book of Acts. And throughout the book of Acts, we've seen Jesus' disciples being his witnesses. And we've seen the good news spreading as the disciples told people about Jesus, sometimes to whole crowds of people and sometimes to just one family. And we've seen how the good news spread despite a lot of opposition and many difficulties. God had been in control. Well, now God had taken the good news about Jesus all the way to Rome, the centre of the known world. And in one sense, what Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 
has happened. But today, 2,000 years later, the good news about Jesus hasn't yet spread to every country in the world, to every different group of people. But God is still in control and nothing can stop the spread of the good news. He's still using ordinary Christians to spread the good news, sometimes to whole groups of people and sometimes to just one person at a time. And he wants us to be a part of that. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you that the good news about Jesus reached Rome. Thank you that your plan to spread the good news about Jesus to the ends of the earth cannot be stopped. Please help us to be certain of the things that we've learnt in the book of Acts and to want to be part of Jesus' mission to people who don't yet know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. OK, now we're going to go over to Laura for a game. We're now going to play a game with actions based on the story that we've heard today. So, action number one. Glamorous assistant. Can you pretend to shake a snake that's attached to your hand? Go, ah! <laughs> it's stuck. <laughs> it's stuck. Number two. Can you be sick and cured again? So go, oh, oh yay! Yay! Number three, if you've got a boat, grab it now. We're going to have a boat sailing on the sea. You sail it on the waves. Okay, action number four is explaining the kingdom of God. So we're going to pretend to talk. And, go. and then number five, boldness, because Paul was bold. Okay. So, let's try it, shall we? Should we go sick and cured? Oh, yay! Uh, shaking a snake off your hand. Explaining the kingdom of God. Boldness. Boat. Boat sailing on the sea. Grab your props. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Sick and cured. Oh, yay! Explaining the kingdom of God. Boldness. Shaking a snake off your hand. Sick and cured. Yay! Boldness. Explaining the kingdom of God. A boat sailing on the sea. Sick and cured. Hey. Shaking a snake off your hand. I'm dead out. Explain the kingdom of God. And let's end on boldness. And back to you. Thanks to Laura and Ben. As usual, there's a worksheet on the church website. You'll need a Bible to answer the questions on that. Next week is All Age Church, so there's no ARC online, but we'll be back in two weeks' time when we'll be looking at what we've learnt in the Book of Acts this term and thinking about how we can get involved in Jesus' mission to take the good news about Jesus to the ends of the earth. I hope you have a good week. Bye.